Hi, and welcome to today's episode of Piano TV. We are gonna take a look at Bach's first French suite, BWV 812, I believe, in D minor. And this is just following our conversation from the last video on Baroque dance suites in general. So I thought it would be kind of fun to show you like one specific and very famous dance suite by Bach and do a, do a full look through and listen through. Though Bach wrote a lot of dance music and dance suites, the pieces that you're gonna hear weren't intended for dancing. They were intended just for listening because they were uh, a little bit in the Baroque era, things got a little bit too complicated for dancing. So it just evolved to, you know, rich people's homes basically for listening. Anyway, let's get started. <laughs> Bach wrote a set of six French suites, and we're just going to be talking about the first of the set in today's video. So in each suite, all of the dances are in the exact same key, and that just provides unity between the dances. He starts us off with a serious allemand. He follows it by a majestic courant, then a slow and expressive saraband. And this is true for all six of the French suites. Now, the fourth dance is a little bit different in each of the suites. It could be a minuet, it could be a gavotte. It's one of the the optionals. And then the very last one is consistent through all six suites. It's the gig, which has a very lively flavor. Bach's first three French suites are all in minor keys, and they're a little bit more serious and somber because of that. And then the last three are in major keys and thus have like a brighter and lighter character. These suites we know today as French, but Bach himself didn't actually give them that title. He called them originally suites for harpsichord. And it's it's also somewhat misleading that Bach's English suites, which are kind of similar, um, actually end up sounding more French than the French suites. So it's kind of like a little bit of a misleading title. The year was 1722 and Bach was freshly married to Anna Magdalena, who was a singer. She's actually his second wife. His first wife passed away a couple years before this. And these French suites were thought to be composed for her as a sort of wedding gift um, because Anna Magdalena was a very musical person. Like she was a really talented singer, but her, her keyboard skills weren't quite as sharp as her singing skills. So Bach wrote her a lot of instructional material, including these French suites. These suites were written during one of Bach's most prolific times as well. He also wrote the Well-Tempered Clavier and Inventions and Symphonias around the same time. And these were all materials he used for teaching his own students. And it's thought that the six suites were probably completed by the year 1720. Bach had several children at this point, both from his previous wife and he was, you know, making some new ones with his current wife, Anna Magdalena. And because of this, he was really interested in providing them a solid musical education. And that's why he got really into writing educational music and he did the same thing for Anna Magdalena herself. If we were to compare the French suites to the English suites, the French suites are actually a little bit easier. I think that might be one of the reasons they're more popular too. So Henley ranks the English suites, I believe between level um, six to seven, which is fairly advanced, but the French suites are between a level four to five slash six. Part of the reason that the French suites are simpler is because the counterpoint used in them isn't quite as dense as it is in the English suites. Um, so I feel like they make a good starting point as both a performer, if you're like a kind of early advanced student, but also as a listener, because it isn't so, there isn't like a million different things to listen to all at once. Towards the end of the Baroque period though, there was a movement towards style galant, which is kind of like a simpler style and the French suites um, embodied more of this style. Bach's first French suite in D minor has five movements. It has the four standard dance suite movements, Allemand, Courant, Saraband, and Gig. And then it has the additional uh, movement, the minuet that composers sometimes chose to add between the saraband and the gig. And all of these movements are in the key of D minor, and that's what allows them to sound consistent when they're played back to back. The German Allemand is what typically kicks off a Baroque dance suite if there's no overture or prelude as an introduction. The features of an Allemand include the moderate tempo, usually in 4-4 time. It's got like a serious uh, character and mood to it. It's not like a fun and games type of dance. It's pretty, uh, pretty serious. This particular Allemand is, I would say a little bit faster than the typical one. And I, I would say that's mainly because if you look through it, you've got these like constant running 16th notes, which gives it the illusion of speed. Um, but the stately and serious mood of the dance comes through really clearly. You'll hear that right away. It's a steady and consistent beat. Um, there's minimal breaks and pauses from the continuity. It's kind of just like a waterfall of constant notes. And you'll notice that it's also highly or ornamental. There's lots of like 
trills and decorations and stuff you can see it's kind of small on the screen but it's got these like tiny little ornaments that give it a little bit of decoration um the ornaments tend to be different depending on um which edition of the music you buy just because there was no official manuscript for the french suites because it wasn't published in box lifetime so the publishers kind of vary widely on what they will typically do so there's not necessarily one right way to do it anyway and that's another reason why the performances tend to sound quite different from one another but yeah let's take a quick listen to this movement dance in the set, the courant, is fast and insistent just like the allemande was, but a main difference is the meter. So the allemande was in 4-4 time, but this courant is in 3-2, it's in triple meter. This particular courant was written in the slower French style as opposed to Italian courants tended to be a little bit faster. Um, and some of Bach's were, were written like that in some of the other French suites in the set, but this particular one was written in the French style. Now, whether it's happy or sad in a major key or a minor key, as we know, all of the dance pieces in the set are in a minor key, um, I find that the courant tends to have like a more emotional sound than the element. Like the element is all business, but the courant, even though it's still fairly serious, I, I feel like it just like lets us in a little bit deeper. Some features of a courant, just to quickly go through, is that they're usually in triple meter, 3-2 or 3-4. They tend to be faster than the Alamans and they have like a, like a sweet character. And it's, sweet is kind of a confusing word when you're referring to something in a minor key. Um, I would almost say like more, more uh, melancholic or a little solemn. Saraband is the most emotional of the bunch. And it's actually very chorale like in sound. So there are four voices in this piece there's soprano, alto, tenor, and bass, satba. Um, and this is just from top to bottom, from highest to lowest. So you can kind of see here's the soprano line, the stems are going up. Here's the alto line in the middle. And then in the middle on the bottom, um, you have the tenor line and then the stems going down is the bass line. From a playing standpoint, chorale or counterpoint writing is a challenge. The fingering is often unusual. There's a lot to think about. Um, there's a lot of different melodies to think about because in general, like melody and chord writing is simple. Like it's two parts, but with chorale writing, suddenly we're juggling four different parts at once. Some common features of a saraband include the meter. It's usually in three, four. Uh, it's very slow, the slowest in a dance suite and it tends to have a halting sound due to emphasizing the second beat. Now if we go and look at the music here you'll see yep this is definitely in 3-4. Um, as far as emphasizing the second beat goes um, you can kind of see there's a tie on beat one and then a note on beat two. A tie on beat one and a note on beat two. Um, you can see this in the alto and tenor lines. It's pretty subtle but um, that's something to listen for when you're listening to it. So let's take a listen to this moody singing like Sarah Band. Next we have two minuets paired back to back. 
Inserting a menuet between the Sarabanda gig is kind of an optional thing. Uh, like, it's not one of the core four dances, but a lot of composers did it because it added um, interest and variety to the set. The minuet set is by no means easy to play, but they are about the easiest in this French suite of all of the different movements. Minuets tend to, in general, be a little easier because by their very nature, they have a steady and repetitive rhythm. Um, they're generally not melodically complicated, and they move at a pretty, well, not slow, but they move at like a moderate to slow tempo. So the first menuet carries on this solemn mood set by the Saraband, only this time it's a little faster and it has a little bit more movement. It's kind of like, um, it always reminds me of the feeling of like you're crawling out of a hole or something like that. You're getting out of the darkness. The B section in this movement right here um, is in this short little minuet. It sort of serves as like a, I find it very peaceful. It's a little happy um, major key section that gives us like a little bit more uh, sunlight, so to speak. It's like the sun is peeking through the clouds finally. And then in the second menuet, we move a little further. Uh, we get a little bit more energy. It's like, we're getting more excited. We can see the sun, things are looking up. The rhythm is lighter and it's just a little bit quicker. And the notes are decorated with quite a few ornaments, which also lightens it up and gives it a little bit of liveliness. And just really quickly, some of the features of a minuet, um, these are things that minuets all tend to have in common. And we've done a full video on this if uh, you want to dig deeper into minuets, but they're in triple meter, usually three, four. They're one of the most popular broke dances and you'll especially see them in um, more like beginner level books because a lot of minuets are actually quite a bit easier than some of the other dances. Um, some suites like this one have two minuets back to back, like one and two. And yeah, they have French origin and the rhythm is relatively simple and not too fast. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a listen to a few moments of each minuet back to back. Surprisingly and unconventionally, the gig or jig isn't in compound time, like six, eight. It's actually just in simple four, four time. But Bach still manages to achieve the dancing lilt that you would get with six, eight time by the abundance of dotted notes. Look, there's like dots everywhere. So when you listen to this recording, it still moves as though it's in compound time. It still has that kind of like swaying from side to side feel. This gig is particularly ornate. It's got a lot of trills and a lot of running 30 second notes like here. And then you've got, uh, where are the trills? Uh, you have ornaments like this kind of scattered throughout, which I think gives it a little bit of a livelier texture. You'll also notice the, the contrapuntal texture, uh, which is a thing for gigs. Um, all I mean by that is you have kind of two melodies, usually two, maybe three running alongside each other. You can see that the left hand has got its own little tune going on and the right hand's also got its own separate tune going on, which makes it a challenge to play. Uh, but it's really good for your brain on the other hand, because you have to think in such a different way you have to think outside of the chords and melody box that we usually think in. And you can kind of see actually there's a, there's more than two melodies. There's a third melody in the middle voice and it actually starts in the middle of voice because you can tell because the stems go down. And then in the top melody, all the stems are going up. So this is actually a three voice counterpoint dance. Some features of a gig are, and we basically already talked about all these, but they're generally in compound time, which unusually this one is not. They are generally fast and lively and have a contrapuntal texture, which again, we talked about with the three different voices. So let's take a listen.
that is all for today's analysis on box first French suite. Hopefully this gives you a bit of perspective. I know that Baroque music is so far removed from the kind of music most of us listen to that it can be kind of a challenge to get into, um, but it's really, really cool and it's very, um, very virtuosic and very tough to play. So hopefully you got something out of that. Thank you so much for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. You can come visit me on social if that floats your boat, um, either in this video, yeah, I think by the time this video airs, um, Michael and I are on our like pseudo honeymoon. Um, pseudo because it's like several months after we are married, so it's not like an immediate honeymoon, but we're going to New York. So you might be watching this um, when we are in New York. So I might not be as active on social media, media or emails or any of that because we're on vacation, but I probably will be posting stuff from the trip on Instagram if you want to follow me there. Anyway, catch you in the next video. Hi, and welcome to today's episode video.